Now that we know a little bit about what transcription is, what the point of it is to make this mRNA copy of the gene to bring it out to the ribosomes, let's talk about the steps. And it's all about what RNA polymerase is doing at each point in time. There are three steps to transcription. The first one is called initiation. In initiation, the RNA polymerase needs to bind onto a particular segment of the DNA molecule, which is called the promoter. The promoter is a little section of the gene right in front of the coding part that allows RNA polymerase to actually attach on. So every single gene starts with this little promoter. Uh, it's nothing but thymines and adenines, T's and A's and A's and T's, and it's called the Tata box for that reason, because you just have a whole bunch of T to A, 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 T, 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 A, 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 T, 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 A, 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 going down the line. Now, every cell in your body has the complete set of genetic information. That means that any cell of your body has the information they need to make any enzyme required by any other cell. But you don't want them to make every single protein that they know how to make all the time. For example, there are proteins, there are enzymes that are active inside your stomach that are there to digest things, to help break materials down. You wouldn't want those kinds of enzymes showing up in your tear ducts. Then your tears would digest your eyes every time you got sad. And that would be very tragic if every time you got sad you were at risk of digesting your eyeballs. So only certain enzymes, only certain genes are going to be turned on in particular tissue types. You only want the uh, proteins which are necessary for the development of bone tissue to be active in your bones. You only want the uh, proteins which are necessary for giving your skin its elasticity and its shape to be active inside your skin cells. Therefore, there are certain proteins inside each cell type which turn on and off certain genes. These are called transcription factors. Transcription factors are going to bind to the DNA molecule at the promoter region in order to allow RNA polymerase to lock onto it. So they kind of prepare the landing strip for RNA polymerase to latch on. The transcription factors are tissue specific. So transcription factors that you would find inside your stomach cell that are going to be turning on the gene, they're going to be attaching themselves to the promoter region of the gene that is for uh, making those digestive enzymes, those transcription factors are only going to bind to that promoter in your stomach cells. Meanwhile, transcription factors in your muscle cells will bind to different kinds of genes. They will activate different promoter regions. So transcription factors, yet another protein you need to know about. Transcription factors are tissue-specific proteins which bind to the promoter region of DNA to allow RNA polymerase to transcribe that gene. And if you don't allow RNA polymerase to transcribe a gene, then your body cannot make it. Your cells cannot make that gene unless it gets transcribed first. Think back to the central dogma of DNA. If you don't make the RNA message, you can't make the protein at the end. So this is a method that cells and tissues can use to decide which kinds of proteins and enzymes and all kinds of chemical products are produced where inside your tissues. Phase one of transcription. Step one, initiation. The tissue-dependent transcription factors bind to the promoter region of the DNA molecule, the promoter region of the gene, and they allow RNA polymerase to latch on to that DNA molecule. This gives RNA polymerase the start transcribing signal. It can begin the process of laying in the RNA nucleotides to begin making this copy, this transcript, this mRNA molecule that we are going to be producing here. After it attaches, it's going to move its way down one base at a time across this DNA molecule, downstream of the promoter region, and eventually it's going to make the ribbon longer and longer and longer and longer as it goes. That second step of transcription is called elongation. In the elongation, RNA polymerase cruises downstream of the promoter region and it elongates the mRNA message. So elongation is when we actually lay in, oh, there's a T here, put an A there. There's an A there, put a U there. Oh, there's a C there, put a G there. This is the product of the elongation process. Now, RNA is a single-stranded molecule. It doesn't hold itself together 
uh, as a double helix the way DNA does. So as RNA polymerase cruises past a certain segment of DNA, once those RNA bases are in, they kind of start peeling away. So you get this ribbon coming out the other side. You can see it down here on the slide. RNA polymerase is opening up the double helix, it's copying the information down, and then there's this mRNA ribbon falling out of this process. And it continues to transcribe the information in the gene until it reaches the very end of the gene. Now the beginning of the gene had a promoter region. The end of the gene is capped off by a section of DNA which is called terminator DNA. It's a cool name, right? Terminator DNA. And it tells the RNA polymerase that that's it. That's the end of the gene. You got one complete gene transcribed. You don't need to keep moving on to the next section of DNA. The terminator DNA is the stop transcribing signal. So once RNA polymerase reaches that terminator DNA, it dislodges, it unhooks, it uncouples from the DNA molecule, and it lets the mRNA ribbon go free. Okay, so that is the end of the transcription process, and appropriately, the very last step is called termination, right? We have terminator DNA. The third and final step of transcription is termination, when RNA polymerase reaches that terminator DNA and then lets go of the DNA molecule and the mRNA ribbon that it just made, the transcript that it just created. Once RNA polymerase has let go of the DNA molecule, the two DNA strands re-anneal to each other. They come right back together as though nothing ever happened. So RNA polymerase can then go transcribe a different gene, and another gene, and another gene, and another gene, until its daily work has been completed. And every time that it's going to transcribe a new gene, it's going to start with initiation, it's going to move on to elongation, and then it's going to finish up with termination. Transcription factors are going to turn on the promoter region, RNA polymerase will bind, it's going to cruise downstream of the promoter region, creating an mRNA ribbon as it goes, and then it's going to reach the terminator DNA in order to uh, indicate that it's time to let go of that DNA molecule and let go of that mRNA ribbon. So that, very briefly, is the process of transcription. One, you start out with initiation. Two, you move to elongation. Three, you move on to termination. And this slide down here gives you a nice close-up view and a summary of each one of those steps. Make sure you know what happens during each one of those steps. However, the mRNA molecule is not really done at this point. There's another process that we need to send it through before it's ready. And in order to talk about this phase, I like to use the analogy of a film strip, a film being made. Because if you've ever made a film, like for example these videos that I'm recording, you could probably tell from the somewhat choppy editing at times, that there's a lot of times when I make bad takes and those need to be edited out before I publish the finished product. And the same is true of RNA. It's a, it's a movie that you make. As it turns out, the same is true of RNA molecules. There is a whole bunch of DNA inside the gene that is non-coding DNA. It's information that the ribosomes don't actually need in order to make the protein. In fact, if you did give them all that information, they would make a broken protein or a non-functional protein. At best, maybe it would be an actively uh, damaging or dangerous protein to have a uh, worst case scenario. So certain sections of the mRNA message that we just copied down have to be cut out. So any given gene, any given DNA molecule has a series of coding segments and non-coding segments. We used to refer to the non-coding segments as junk DNA, but we don't really use that term so much anymore because we realize it's not junk, it's not just extraneous, it actually does have some important functions related to gene control and gene expression, but it's just not used for coding for proteins. We call it non-coding DNA. And any given gene is going to look like this. It's going to have coding DNA, non-coding DNA, coding DNA, non-coding DNA, coding DNA, non-coding DNA. And because RNA polymerase copies the entire gene, it's got all that non-coding stuff in there as well. So we have to cut out the non-coding segments of the mRNA message before it's ready to go on to the ribosome. So the parts that we are going to remove are called introns. 
parts, introns. The parts that we are going to keep are called exons. So using the movie making analogy, the introns are the parts that get left on the cutting room floor. They're going to be snipped out. The introns get left in the nucleus. They get left behind. They are left in the nucleus, and the exons get to exit the nucleus. That's going to be the finished product. The exons will then be expressed as proteins in the finished product. Here I have a uh, gentleman, Buster Keaton, here taking a look at a film strip, and it's kind of like an RNA molecule. He sees that there are exons and introns and exons and introns in it. We gotta cut some of that material out. So we do just that. We use a series of enzymes, and they're RNA enzymes, as a matter of fact, and they cut this mRNA ribbon, this transcript, into little segments here. They remove all of those introns, and then they splice together all of the exons. So now we have exon, 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 and those are going to be what actually gets to leave the nucleus. All the introns are left in the nucleus there. This is called RNA processing, where we remove the introns and we splice together, connect back together, the exons. Now, to continue the movie analogy, now we have a finished film. It's been edited together. We got all of the extra scenes that we don't want out of the film. So we need to send it to the theater so they can actually show the film. But you can't just jam film into an envelope and send it out. You got to put it in a canister. You got to put, put it in a protective case. So we do that with the mRNA as well. We add what's called a five prime cap and a poly A tail to the three prime end. So on the five prime end of the mRNA message, you have a cap, and then on the three prime end, you get this tail. It's called a poly A tail because it's just adenine, 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 A, 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 all the way down the line. So let's say the mRNA molecule that we created here, let's see, it follows the same rules as the DNA strand. So let's say that this was the three prime end, and this is the five prime end for our original DNA, then the RNA molecule, this is going to be the five prime end, and this will be the three prime end. So we will add a cap. It's just a series of bases, okay? So it's just more RNA bases that we're adding, but it's called the cap. And then we'll add a tail, a poly A tail. Ah, on and on and on. Could be hundreds of A's long here at the end. Now, this is a proper RNA molecule, complete and total. We have a cap, a tail, all of the introns have been removed, the exons have been spliced together. We are good to go. Now, one question you could ask is, what does the machinery which splices together the exons actually look like? And that machinery actually has a very cool name. It's called the spliceosome. The spliceosome is a series of enzymes, RNA enzymes, as a matter of fact. So what we call ribozymes. Not all enzymes are proteins. I think I may have alluded to that earlier, but here's an example of it where we're actually going to use an RNA molecule as though it is an enzyme. It's going to catalyze this reaction. And what it does is it pinches together. You can see down here on the slide, right? You have an intron surrounded by two exons. So it takes the two ends of that intron, pinches them together, creating a hairpin loop. It snips both of the ends of that intron, and then it splices together. It catalyzes a bond between these remaining exons, which then allows the entire message to just go exon, 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 with the intron having been removed. The introns get cut out, okay? The way that I always remember it, right, because you're cutting out something that's named an intron, and that's a little bit confusing. The way I remember it is that the introns get left in the nucleus. They're being left behind. They're in the cutting room. They're on the cutting room floor there. The exons get to exit the nucleus. The exons get expressed as proteins. Now, what fate lies in store for our mRNA molecule that we just made? That I will attend to in the next video.